Okay, so we've been introduced to the conjugate, and for this scenario here, we're going to say that z is equal to a plus bi, which then means the z conjugate is a minus bi by definition here. And so if I'm going to do the conjugate of the conjugate, what this here means is I'm going to take, well, z, a minus bi, which is the conjugate, a minus bi, the conjugate of that is then going to be a plus bi, which is means it's equal to z. And so the conjugate of the conjugate is back to z. The next property says that if these two things equal each other, that's true if and only if z is purely, purely a real number, not and with no imaginary parts, a real number, no imaginary parts, no imaginary parts, or you could say that b equals zero. Number three, what we have for this property here, and I'm just going to give you this scenario here, and I'll let you prove it for yourself. What this is, the sum of the conjugate is equal to the conjugate of the sums. And you can prove that for yourself by just crunching the numbers here with algebra and seeing that you get this indeed. Similarly, a negative complex number conjugate that is simply going to be the conjugate of that value and negative of that. Five simply takes the conjugate value, treats it like exponent rules, conjugate this first one times the conjugate of the second number, and that is what number five will be. Again, you can prove that for yourself if you don't believe me. And finally, this last one, I can, similar to exponents, this is the same thing as saying the conjugate and then a reciprocal of that. Um, and these are the properties of conjugates that we can have available to us. They are not in your formal booklet, but they can be handy sometimes. Okay, and those says, so now multiply negative five plus eight i by its conjugate, negative minus eight i. And when I do that, then I'm gonna conjecture a formula for z dot z conjugate. So if I do this, I get 25. Because this is a difference of squares, the middle terms cancel out and it's minus 64 i squared which is 25 plus 64, which is 89. And so from that, what happens when I multiply the conjugate by its original? It's a difference of squares scenario. And so it ends up being a squared plus b squared is what this always ends up to. It ends up being a real number only. All right, and finally, let's use our rules to express a z conjugate in terms of w. Well, if this is z, z conjugate is simply going to be 1 plus i w squared, and I'm going to conjugate that, which I know I can switch around these terms and treat the conjugate like an exponent. Well, the conjugate of that particular complex number is 1 minus iw squared. And this is the conjugate in terms of w. There's some practice with the conjugate.